And good morning, everyone. It is just about to be 7 a.m. on surgery day. One, two, three, four. So I know right now some of you are probably going to surgery. What the heck did you do? And that is because I have not really talked about this yet on anything. Ever since four years ago, I have been getting really bad, like sharp pains in the side of my knee. They would come randomly and literally just feel like a knife going into the side of my knee. And it's like happened pretty regularly over the last four years. I saw a lot of different doctors. I got x-rays, MRIs, no one could figure it out. But last October, the doctor that I'd been seeing to try to figure it out was like, well, at this point, uh, the only solution I can think of is you go in and get surgery because something must have happened in the last knee surgery. And I was like, well, I can't get knee surgery right now. We're five months before the Olympics. Again, story of my life. They were like, yeah, we can do a cortisone shot just to keep the pain away. And also because of doping with the Olympics, so we can get uh, drug tested anytime. So I couldn't do that. So I've just been in pain for you know a long time i didn't want to say anything because i didn't want a, a new mystery knee injury to get in the way of me getting funding for the olympics or to have like my support pulled out again because they would just say oh you're injured again like you're done and i got back from the olympics i saw a new doctor at stanford medical and he figured out what the pain is from pretty quickly he said oh well, your screw is not flush against your bone and your tendon has been getting caught underneath. It's like pinching a tendon. I was like, wow, no one has been able to figure that out for years. And he said, really? Seems pretty obvious to me. Yeah, so I am going into that doctor. We're gonna cut my knee open. There's two buttons right here that they're gonna go in through this incision. And then this one's not part of the pain, but if you can see that bump, there's a nice shadow right now. When I move my skin, you can see that bump that doesn't move. That is another screw right there that has just been sticking out. It didn't end up flush and it's just annoying because if I hit my knee on a table or my skateboard hits it, it's a lot of pain. So we're gonna get that screw out too. Oh, it's sad and frustrating. I've been enjoying skateboarding and making so much progress with skating and now I'm gonna have to put a hold on everything again. And I'm so sick of having to do that in my life because of my knee. But hopefully, once these are out, my pain is resolved and I don't have this issue anymore. So we'll see. Surgery is in about an hour. I'm on my way to the hospital right now. Ricky is with me. Uh, 7 a.m. Yeah, because of COVID still apparently being a thing, he can't come into the hospital. I have to literally go in by myself and be in the waiting room and operating. Uh, preparing area by myself, so that kind of sucks. Thanks, baby. Okay. Okay. Okay, that is it. You're all checked in and ready to go. Three hours later. All right, guys. Welcome aboard. Surgery went well. Uh, this was a lot less traumatic than like my ACL reconstruction. When I came out of my ACL reconstruction, I was like, and as soon as I woke up, I was like, ah, all right, ready to go. And they're like, okay, hey, we have to keep you here for a little. I'm like, I'm ready. They got the screws out, the buttons out. Before I went in, I was like, oh yeah, like, are they gonna have to pry it out or something? He's like, oh yeah, just like a normal Makita power drill. I was like, really? That's what like I was about to say. <laughs> People have this illusion of surgery, it's also professional, whatever. It's literally just homeboy with a drill, just like. Yeah. <laughs> they went to like Home Depot, bought a Did drill off the shelf, and they're like, a screw <laughs> Sterilize the screw from MD, but like that's super wild. <laughs> that's sick. The only sad thing is they didn't let me keep my screw 
I really wanted to keep it. They tried. They called legal. A few different people were trying. Really? Yeah, then at one point the girl was like, oh yeah, like, well, we can give it to you, but it's going to cost like maybe like a couple hundred dollars for us to like sterilize it. And I was kind of like, well, I mean, I guess like at this point, like I, I would just pay it because it's, you know, whatever. If once a lifetime chance to get the screw that was in my knee for four years, went to the Olympics with me, and then the little buttons are on the side. Mm -hmm. But then they came back and they're like, oh yeah, no, legal said no. And then I was like, oh, which dumpster did it go in? <laughs> I was gonna send you out to dumpster dive for me, but they were like, ha ha ha, you're funny. In the biohazard hospital. Yeah. Hospital? Oh. I got my image of the screw. So that, is that what was wrapped around? So no. this screw was what was in my, is this tibia right here? Yeah. That screw is right here. And then these two little buttons are what was right here. And those two little buttons are what have been causing me four years of pain that uh, they weren't flush on the bone. They were like slightly lifted so my tendon would get caught under there and then it would be like Zzz. Later that same evening. It is now seven o'clock at night. So about eight hours since my surgery finished, I'm at home. Uh, you know, my knee is, as far as I can tell, looking good. I can move it. But I want to give you guys a rundown of just what I went through at the hospital. So, you know, maybe if you're seeing this video because you're gonna be going through a procedure like this, you know what to expect. What happened with this was I checked in, as you guys saw, I was brought to the room, they took my vitals, double checked all the information was correct. And then the anesthesiologist came by um, just to give me a rundown of what was gonna happen that they'd bring me to the operating room and everything there. So um, everyone came by and talked to me. The surgeon came by and talked to me, said, okay, this is the procedure confirming that we were gonna go in, take out the two buttons in this place, take out the screw in this place and yada yada. Um, so they double checked all the information and this dot that you can see is where they had a uh, tube of some sort in me to inject the uh, whatever stuff, the anesthesia. They put a blood pressure monitor thing on this arm, another heart rate monitor on my finger, and then they wheeled me into the operating room. Once inside the operating room, they had me shift onto another bed, and there was about probably like five to seven people in the operating room for this. And they laid me down, they connected the anesthesia to my arm and like as soon as they connected the drugs into my arm I started to feel like uh, a little bit fuzzy like whoa okay all right I feel it coming in I feel it starting to hit the next thing I knew I was back in the recovery room opening my eyes and I was like oh wow cool we're done what time is it they administered the anesthesia at 8 30 a.m I woke up at 11.40 and according to the text my boyfriend got, I actually finished surgery at uh, 11 a.m. And so I was still sleeping for like 40 minutes after they brought me out of, out of the um, operating room. I looked at my leg, it was all wrapped up like this and opposed to when I had knee surgery, there was like a full brace around it. This was just the padding. The nurses asked how I was feeling if I wanted a drink because, oh, during the anesthesia, they had a breathing tube down my throat and they don't administer that, I guess, until you're like already passed out. So you don't feel them put it in or anything, but I had a breathing tube in and they asked me if I wanted some juice or water and I got a ginger ale because it settles your stomach and I wasn't sure if I was gonna be a little nauseous. They also had given me, I told them that I do get motion sickness or car sickness. So they gave me a like little nausea sticker that they had behind my ear to help with the nausea during the anesthesia. So I actually didn't feel nauseous afterwards. Then they gave me a painkiller, I believe it was a hydrocodone. I actually woke up and I felt great, which was a big difference than my ACL surgeries. When I woke up from the ACL surgery, I was like, oh, like, oh I'm, this is crazy. My knee is so wow. Like I was like super out of it after that anesthesia, but I guess for a hardware removal, they don't dose you up as hard because um, your body's not gonna go through such extreme stress as a reconstruction. So I woke up and like immediately when I woke up, I was like, oh, cool, sweet, I'm ready to get out of here. I ended up leaving the hospital at about 12 o'clock because no one could come into the hospital. They wheeled me downstairs in a wheelchair to the uh, front where Ricky was waiting. I was able to use the crutches here to get into the van and I just put my leg up on the dashboard as you guys saw. And um, that was pretty much it. So 
it was really a quick and easy procedure. I wasn't in pain. Um, I had the one painkiller at about 12 noon and it's 7 p.m. right now and I don't really feel pain. I'd say a minor dull pain, only, I don't know, two or three on a scale out of 10. So it definitely doesn't feel like it, currently it's warranting another painkiller from me, which is really good because I try to not take painkillers unless I really need them. Also, I can weight bear, which is really great. After my um, knee surgeries, I literally couldn't even put any weight on my leg. And I can already stand and step on my leg, but they want me to use crutches for a few days just to, you know, put less stress on it. But so yeah, so that's all, um, I guess all the information that I can give you currently about this. And I'll bring you guys with me in two days when I go to get the dressing changed so we can see what it looks like inside. I honestly can't tell if it's swollen at all or if it's just like super wrapped. I'm not typically a sweller. It looks thick, but it might just be all of the layers of bandages because we have this and then we have this and then we have some of that. So um, yeah, we'll see what's under there in a few days. Three days later. I went in for my surgery, follow-up and dressing change appointment and the doctor changed out the bandages and said my knee was looking all good and they would see me at my next appointment in six weeks. Much, much, much later. Okay guys, it is now seven weeks since my knee surgery. From the last time you saw me until about three weeks after surgery, I was getting really bad bruising all the way down my leg, which was super crazy. It went like from my upper thigh all the way down to my ankle. And I didn't have bruising that bad when I had my actual ACL replacements. So I was pretty surprised at having so much bruising from the hardware removal, but I was able to get back to physical activity pretty quickly. I got my stitches out at two weeks and last week I had my six week checkup with the doctor and was cleared to do, you know, heavier impact. Now I guess the bone is healed enough. Something super interesting is that in the x-ray that I took at six weeks, you can still see the shape of the screw in my bone, even the threads of the screw. And I did not expect to see the hole in my bone have that much detail. Like that was crazy. And then this past week I headed out to Woodward West and I was skateboarding a bunch and I felt really good to be back on my skateboard. I felt strong, but my knee did get sore. After a fair amount of skating, my knee, you know, was pretty much telling me it was, it, it was needing a rest. So anyways, I feel like I'm back to probably 95% good. And so that has been my knee surgery experience from start to finish. I hope this video helps you guys if you're going through the same thing. And let me know if you've ever been through a surgery like this in the comments. See you guys next time. Bye.